Hello and welcome to the Fire Pit. This is your editor, Tom. I just wanted to pop in with a quick word before we begin. So, a bit of the TomBot algorithm from last week's episode seemed to have found its way into Josh's computer. So, there are a bit of microphone and technical difficulties in the earlier part of this recording. Thankfully, we get it sorted out early enough. So, about 10 minutes in, you should hear Josh in all of his baritone beauty. It shouldn't be too much of a deal, but still, on behalf of the management, we apologize for the inconvenience. Have this free podcast as consolation and enjoy the show. I'm not sorry in the slightest. Nope, you've caused enough trouble as it is. Back in the box. Welcome to the Fire Pit special episode selection section. I am Tom, British name Thompson, and as always, I am joined by my fellow co-hosts. Dan, British name Nigel. And Josh, British name Reginald. So we just came off of Jaws, the high point of our sink or swim summer tour. And now we have an open sea in front of us. Uh, this section, special episode. That Selection this is, section number three, what, what? Number three, lucky number for me, wow. guys. Yeah, man, we've been doing this for, we feel like seasoned vets now. We're not, but we feel like seasoned vets. We've yeah. seen some shit, guys. Yeah, <laughs> seen some stuff. I wouldn't recommend it. Mostly, Path, <laughs> mostly Pathfinder and Swashbuckler. Yes. Yeah, and a little bit of dead calm peppered over yeah. top. So the purpose of this one, again, is to find six films that connect to what's going to be our destination. All the actors and actresses that go from there. And uh, to actually do it, to explain the rules so much better than I can. I'm And the criteria for the selection section, I turn it over to Nigel. Ah, thank you, Thompson, as always. So the criteria for our selection, if you're new to the podcast, is we take an actor or actress from the last film we've seen. And we move them to the next film. So it's kind of a variation of the game Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. However, our goal is not to get to a Kevin Bacon movie. We just add bonus points if we do happen to find one along the way. So, for example, last week we watched Jaws. And our connection to Jaws was the week before Swashbuckler. Both movies starred Robert Shaw. So we took Robert Shaw from Swashbuckler and went on to Jaws. And so the criteria for this next list of movies will be we will take an actor or actress that was in Jaws not counting the shark, even though he has a name, his name was Bruce, but we will not be taking Bruce, but we take an actor and actress from Jaws and we will move down to our next six weeks of movies. And we have a uh, special destination for our next six weeks. And to explain that, I'll kick it over to Reginald. Thank you, Nigel. Hello, I am Reginald, American name Josh, but I've already explained that. So uh, I need no introduction, technically. <laughs> so this next tour is, I was doing some research and uh, I'm proud to say that I'm the one who came up with this movie. And I'm glad that everybody agreed because I, per I particularly like this movie. It's newer. And I was doing some research and I was just looking at random box office numbers for the month of September because I knew that we would reach the pinnacle of this next journey, whatever you want to call it, on September 25th. That's when we will be recording the episode. So I was looking at the highest grossing movie of September of all time. And with a not even a narrow margin, and now I'm regretting not bringing those numbers up. Hang on, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. Box office. Mojo. This is going to make for great editing later. It will, it will. Um, because. <laughs> So the highest grossing movie of September and our next journey to will be 2017 box office hit It. What's it? Wait, what, it. That's, that's what the is movie. It? it. Yeah, I know. What movie is it? It is the movie. No. What movie are we watching? It from 2017. What, what 2017 movie are we watching? Lots of movies came out in 2017. The remake of It from the book. Okay. Enough Abbott and Costello. I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> it, 2017, a uh, not a remake because the original was technically a TV serial, but the adaptation from the Stephen King novel, It, was a two-part movie, and the first one came out in 2017 to rave reviews and an amazing box office draw. And as I said, the big reason it pulled me to it is because it is the number one grossing movie in all of September, which 
you know, it's not a huge feat because typically it just depends on the movie. It grossed almost $287 million the month of September in 2017. Now, the number two highest grossing film in the month of September is, amazingly enough, It Chapter 2. But it only grossed $194 million in September of 2019. So it ended up pulling in almost $700 million, which is pretty impressive for a rated R horror film in this day and age, right? Yeah, seriously. And this so, was that domestic and global, or just? This says, I'm just looking at the thing. It says cumulative growth, so uh, probably global. Not bad though. Not yeah. bad at all. But I thought yeah. this was pretty interesting, and I love this movie. I was indifferent towards this movie when I saw it. Then again, it was kind of spoiled by nostalgic memories of the Tim Curry it, which I saw bits of as an adult. I'm like, ooh. Maybe I do need to see the 2017 again and a little more uh, I, of a fair shake. It's so, oh boy. You, it's so funny you mentioned that, Tom, because I, too, avoided this one because I had fond memories of the original TV movie It. And I was like, I just don't want to see the remake because I don't know if it'll be as good. Or I knew it was going to be darker than the TV movie. And then I actually just within the last four or five weeks rewatched the TV movie and was like, this is terrible. Oh, yeah. Like, I, it was one of those movies I hated growing up. Like, Tim Curry was terrifying to me. I was terrified of It clowns and all that other shit but when i rewatched it as an adult i'm like this is bad like really yeah, it, bad like i was you, afraid of this <laughs> i watched that movie and i was reminded why tim curry is the only actor in that movie that had any kind of career before and after that movie because all the other actors in that movie are terrible yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. just so bad so now i'm keeping myself virginal and pure and i will not watch it until we get to it in six weeks so i want to see the remake and really enjoy it have... uh, so we know where we're going but now we need to determine how to get there and for that we each have two lists of six uh, all ending in it that we're going to present here uh, one after the other and during and after the end we'll discuss the pluses minuses yeses or nos then we will decide which list is maybe not the best list per se but the one we're most interested in taking but first i have some trivia for you guys because as our viewers who listened to our last selection section know i went stupid crazy and created an algorithm to do all the work for me because I like that the last, not... the last selection section yes <laughs> For a small recap, we were supposed to come in with three lists, the last one too. I came in with over 3,000, so I was off by a multiple of 10, 100, a multiple of 100. <laughs> we didn't go through all of them, mind you. I got vetoed on that pretty quick. But in the interim, I've been working on that algorithm, and I began to basically, over the course of the past month, I have basically cached and downloaded 225,000 IMDb pages. That's totaling at almost seven gigs total of just basically text. 40,000 of those are actors. So this is our trivia section this week. So I'm going to ask you, uh, and I'm show, solely based off of the size of their uh, IMDb page. So who do you think is the number one American actor with the most movies? I'm saying with movie acting credits. This is a... Uh, the criteria for this one is I when I parse the pages with my script, I pull only movies they were in, and not uh, voice acted or anything to that. They had to be actual movies that they were in. So the largest file of my stuff that I've parsed, who do you think fills that role? Number one American movie actor. The number one is French. Number two is Bollywood actor. But the number one American movie actor. So who do you uh, think that would be? Alive or dead? They're alive. Have they been in anything recently or are they retired? I couldn't tell you that. I'm just going purely out size of their uh, parsed page. So they have the most acting credits. Are we talking width or girth? <laughs> okay, I'm going to let <laughs> you know you, that your, you. only hint, your only hint is that question is relevant. Rod Wait, Jeremy? What? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I was just what? about to ask, do porn actors count? Because like, I know they've been in a shit ton of films. And, like most yeah. of them were, were filmed yesterday. So wait, yes. porn counts on IMD? There are porn on IMD? Yeah, there yeah. Are, oh, yeah. yeah there's porn, there's porn credits. Yeah, yeah. Ron Jeremy has the largest file in terms of what my script does pull. So I always thought that was very interesting. Because he was number one for the longest time. And then at, like I got into a bunch of Bollywood films through the uh, script. And uh, my algorithm, that's better. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now. 
here's the next one. These are sheer sizes of their IMDb page. So yeah, it's real quick, Josh. You're kind of sounding a little bit robotic right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You so, keep you keep cutting in and out. All right. Well, let me reconnect. I'm gonna hang up and call in. <laughs> all right. So who is the largest American IMDb profile? That that's this this question. Who do you think is the largest out of all of my uh, archived profiles? God, now, it's, is you it David large? Bowie? No. No. Tom. Bowie David. No, no. You guys aren't even close, but it's Dolly Parton. She is the number two largest profile I have downloaded. Today Dolly. I learned. Yeah. What now, you um, you're not going to be able to get the first number one. The number one I'm just going to give to you. The largest profile, 1.3 megs, which is huge because that's almost twice the size of Dolly Parton's, is uh, Gerard <laughs> Caron. Who? Gerard Caron. He's a French musician, director, guy. Now, the number three largest IMDb profile. Knowing that David Bowie is actually number, I think, four or five. I didn't write that one down. But David Bowie is really close to these guys. And uh, Dolly being number two, who do you think number three would be? Now, I'll give you a bit of a tip. He recently had a uh, biography made of him within the past few years. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yes. I'm still going to answer anyways because I know Nigel's right. I'm going to say Robin Williams. Nope. Elton John. Oh! Oh, okay, yeah. That that actually yeah. was going to be my serious answer. I was just like, there's no way. It's, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Well, that's all I got for trivia. So that's I thought trivia. those were some interesting tidbits after I uh, downloaded all those files. 36 gigs. Almost 37. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Real quick, do you want to ask your very first question? All right. Is the number one... Um, oh, American you're getting robotic again. Am I really? You sound like Tombot. Yeah, let's take a pause while you work on that. He's he's replacing us with robots. That's what's going on. He's know, been replaced by a robot. Well, he's the one that created the AI to do all his work for him. It probably revolted against him and replicated all of his family, you know. And back. he back tried. Now. No, uh, he's been fully replaced by robot Josh. Yeah, he's now. Been fully replaced. Now he's all like, oh, I need to shut down my algorithm, and it's like, I can't let you do that, Josh. All right. Well, give me. Five minutes. Damn. How's that? Is that better? Oh, there, much better. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you, you know, I wonder if the original one was, uh, it was switched on the wrong one anyway. Yeah. You sound much better. Yeah. Now. You actually sound like you're in the room with us now instead of. Dude. Yeah. I wonder if it was on the wrong, on the wrong mic. Mine does that because I have a webcam and the webcam has a built-in mic, but it's garbage quality. So I never use it. But every now and then when I use do a Hangouts call, um, it switches to that mic for some reason. Oh, that yeah. annoys me because that means I've been recording this probably on my internal mic by accident. You have, but that's okay. Let's let's start this podcast over from the very beginning. Everyone react the same way you did because I'm not going to re-edit. No. Go. No. 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 I'm going to veto that. Yeah. So who wants to go first on their uh, – get their picks in? I can go well, first. Or Tom, if you want to go, that's fine too. Well, yeah, let me go, because both of mine are just duds. Uh, get me out of the way, and then you guys, boopity boop, and we can go from there. I'm actually going to start off with my better list. So my first list here, I'm calling tentatively Cops, Criminals, Killers, and Clowns. The four Cs. <laughs> the four Cs, Killers, okay. Uh, this one, we're taking Roy Schneider. Schneider. Scheider. Uh, we're taking Roy Scheider into the French Connection. Mm, good choice. And thank you. And we're going to steal Gene Hackman from the French Connection and go into Unforgiven. Mm. And from Unforgiven, we're going to follow a man with no name, named Clint Eastwood, into the Deadpool. Oh, that's the last Dirty Harry film. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to sing a song. Actually, we're not going to sing a song because this is going to be the non-musical version of Les Miserables with Liam Neeson, who was in the Deadpool. I didn't know that until I looked that up. And Liam Neeson is going to high-five Charlize Theron into Atomic Blonde. And <laughs> then we're going to float on down with Scars Guard into It. Nice. That's, That's a decent list. list. That's not a bad list. That's not a bad list. I have mm. to say, if we're giving it our ratings, I haven't seen French Connection. I haven't seen Unforgiven. I haven't seen Death. I haven't seen four movies. <laughs> but well, you're remember... interested in seeing some of them at least. Yes. Yes. 
Because remember, we uh, you can give it a rating if you want to see it. So plus one or minus one um, if you don't want to see it. And mm -hmm. a zero if you haven't seen it. Nice. Although I, I want to say that rating system, because that's the one we used on the last one, seems flawed now, especially considering the one we ended up picking. We picked it because we hadn't seen a lot of the movies. So it's almost like we should give movies we haven't seen a plus one. I'm just, you know what, honestly, let's just do away with the rating system this, this bout. Yeah, I think yeah. that's fair. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll just go on a, the merits of what, uh, the yeah. movies. And so, Nigel, what are your thoughts on this one? I like the list. Um, they're all pretty good movies. I haven't seen French Connection in a long time, but oh, I love that movie. I've actually only ever seen Unforgiven once in my entire life. So I'd like to see that again. I've never seen Atomic Blonde. I've never seen... What was your other movies on there? Les Miserables. Had... Yeah, I've not seen that version of Les Miserables. That's the one um, with Russell Crowe as Cavalier, right? Detective no, Cavalier? No, this is uh, like the 90s one. This one also has... Um... Oh, I thought I Russell Crowe had that, was in that one. I thought he played uh, Detective Cavalier. Was that um, Jeffrey Rush? This is one with Jeffrey Rush as uh, Inspector Javert. This is this is a non musical one. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking of the uh, it was Russell Crowe because yeah, that that's right, he did sing in that one. So mm -hmm. I, honestly, I, I think my overall um, re reflection on it is decent list. I wouldn't mind doing it. Yeah, cool. if it's, that's the one, if that's bad. the one we yeah, if that's the one we go with, it'd be okay. Although Deadpool, that's uh, not with Ryan Reynolds, right? Duh. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's the de it's the Deadpool. The, the duh was supposed to be a slash yeah. S. I was oh. being sarcastic. <laughs> the, um, although it is right. one of the more obscure Dirty Harry films. A lot of people forget that that's the last Dirty Harry movie. Now, is it one of the good ones? We could find out. but uh... I, I, I think they're all good, except the first one is just such a standout film that it just overshadows its sequels. But its sequels are pretty good. I think the only one I don't like is, uh, I can't think of the name of it. I think it's the third one. I can't awesome. remember right. it either. All right, so my turn? Yep. Yes. All right, I'm going to go with my uh, second favorite list right here. I'm going to go with my first variation, because I think if we do a third list, I'm going to go with my second variation. But let's go like this. Okay, my second list, my first list that I'm going to be presenting, I call From the Library. Um, each one of these movies are adapted from a book or ha a literary source. Okay. So I have two versions of this. And I think the one I'm going to be showing first is a better one, because I think yeah, my next list, I, I'm not a huge fan on my final film to it so first variation is uh roy scheider to marathon man oh nice no. <laughs> um from marathon man following via william devine devane i don't know how to pronounce his last name so apologies to you to 2000 hit kevin bacon film hollow man kevin bacon yeah yes. so that would be our second kevin bacon film if we chose to go with this list that is based off of a book it is inspired by uh hg wells Memoirs um, of Invisible Man. Man. Yeah, mm -hmm. The Invisible Man. So uh, that's where that one comes from. I saw that one. I'm like, doing it. <laughs> I don't care how I have to fit this in. It's going in there. But we go follow <laughs> Hollow Man via Josh Brolin to the 2010 movie True Grit. Ooh, and, Josh, you are singing. And then uh, from True Grit, we go via Jeff Bridges to, and this will be the low point of this uh, particular list, to 2014 box office bomb of Seventh Son. Mm. I got a 5.5 on IMDb. Not a great <laughs> film. I haven't seen it all the way through, but it didn't do very well, and it was like a March release. So It's mostly but, awful. Yeah, I've never even heard of this one. Following Seventh Son via Jamon Hunso, I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly either, we go to 2019 movie Shazam. So, uh, yep, because he was in that movie. Jamon Hunso, you say. How do you spell that? Uh, D-J-I-M-O-N- Honso. DJI. Yeah, DJ. Jimon Honso. He's the uh, that black actor with the accent. He's a guy who in uh, Guardians oh. of the Galaxy, he was like, he's like, who? I'm Star-Lord. Who? Yeah, that's him. Oh, yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Then uh, Shazam via Jake Dylan Grazer to It, 2017. Jake Dylan Grazer. Yep. Nice. He's one of the kids I'm going on a limb. Yep, yep. Honestly, this is a pretty solid yeah. list. Yeah, that is a pretty good one. I mean, love the remake of True Grit. Love, and if we did that movie, I love. I have so many thoughts on that because I'm a huge fan of both movies, both versions of that movie. And I love the fact that Jeff Bridges plays Rooster Cogburn completely different from John Wayne. He doesn't try to be John Wayne in that movie, and he makes the character his own. I love the 
quick title. You're uh, you sound like you're a ways away from your microphone. Oh, that's because I flipped it up. Here we go. Is that better? <laughs> yep, much, much better. better. <laughs> go on, Reginald. Today's episode is brought to you by mic issues. We are yeah. all having mic yeah. issues. Yeah. yeah, seriously, if somebody <laughs> wants to sponsor us and get us some decent microphones, we're not going to say no. And we will plug the shit out of your product. Something that just straps to our heads and does not. Well, that's a headphone anyways. God damn it. We can't even handle a headphone. <laughs> All right. So I've seen Hollow Man. Didn't like it so much. Um, I don't know what it was about it that I didn't dig. Marathon Man and True Grit I have seen. Great films. Never heard of Seventh Son. I've kind of been curious to see Shazam because I... It's better than Aquaman. That's a pretty low bar. It is. Uh, it is. It is. But it's... Uh, it's a decent it's, movie, it's, though. It's, it's a, a good decent movie. movie. Like, I love it because it's one of the few movies where the superhero is incredibly flawed. Mm. And yeah. he has to overcome those flaws to actually become the superhero. And it's not like stupid flaws like in Man of Steel or Batman v Superman. But yeah. they're like genuine flaws. Like, Shazam is played off like a kid. Yeah, I also love the fact that when he first gets his powers, he has no idea how to use them. Whereas, like, most time they show, even in comic book movies, the minute they get their powers, they suddenly they have mastery over them. And you're like, no, no, because he's very much a child in an adult body at this point. Yeah. It's literally big with superpowers, and I love that. I do like that about the movie. And then something lighthearted, too. They didn't go grim and gritty. Like, I have powers, and it's a burden. It's like, holy crap, I'm bulletproof, and I can fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, um... God dang it, the villain in that movie. Oh, shoot, I know who you're talking about, because bald guy. Um, yeah, Mark Strong. It? Thank you. He, he's a fantastic villain in this movie, too. He's just but a yeah. fantastic hey. villain, period. He's, he mm -hmm. always does a good job as a bad guy. Yeah, he yeah. plays a good bad guy. All right. Nigel, so, your thoughts? Uh, I like I said, solid list. I fucking love True Grit, so that's that's gonna be a banger for me. And I, I actually really enjoyed Shazam for those same reasons. I love how it's a little bit lighthearted. I love how it's a DC movie, but they didn't go grim dark. It, it kind of reminds me of Aquaman in that they were just having fun making a movie and they didn't take it too seriously. So I do like that. The other movies, I've actually never seen Marathon Man. I've heard about it. But I've never, I've never seen and I've been one, I've been wanting to watch it, just never got around to it. Oh, and Seventh Son, seen... I've I've seen Seventh Son. It's, well, it's awful, um, <laughs> but it's an entertaining kind of awful. So you'll forget that you're watching a bad movie and just focus on the fact that ooh look shiny. But then once the movie's over, you're gonna be like, oh my god, that was a bad. It was bad. That was really bad. <laughs> it was just really bad. As long as it's not a uh, dead calm bad, I think we could be, I could be okay with that well, level of bad. Unlike dead calm, something actually happens in that movie. And, and it's over. And unlo also unlike dead calm, Seven Sun is over before you know it. Like it's, it's a quick movie. Yeah. Out of the ratings on this one, it's the lowest rated with a 5.5. Yeah. It's, it's, it ain't good. I ain't saying, I'm not going to defend it. It ain't good. Good list. I like it. But, <laughs> but anyway, Nigel, onto your list. Uh, my first list is called Reality Bites, and it deals with movies that either challenge reality, change the character's reality, or kind of um, imply that reality isn't is what we think it is. So, number one, we follow Richard Dreyfus from Jaws into Close Encounters. Oh, classic! I was wondering if one of you guys was going to go with that one. Yeah, number two, we take Lance Henriksen from Close Encounters and go to Alien 3, not Alien or Aliens, Alien 3. Interesting Ugh. choice. Yeah, interesting yeah, that's choice. Not a good movie. Bad movie. <laughs> Bad, Bad movie, movie. But yeah. But uh, the reason why it fits the theme is because of the, um, uh, the fact that, uh, again, Ripley has been frozen for a while and comes out and finds the world around her is completely different. And she's also on a uh, prison planet and all that shit. So anyways, then uh, from Alien 3, we take Charles Dance, Tyrion Lannister himself. I didn't realize he was in that one. Yeah, Charles Dance um, into Last Action Hero. I knew it. I knew it. I, won, I knew yeah. it. Yep. As soon as he said his name, like, this is going to be Last yep. Action Hero. Yep. Last Action Hero. Uh, which fits the theme of reality changing. Yeah. 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 From Last Action Hero, we take F. Murray Abraham and go into Mimic. Oh, interesting. I don't yeah. know that one. It's a it's a monster it's a monster film. It's about a came out uh, like ninety nine. Yeah. It also has a tie to Alien Three, and that Charles S. Dutton from Alien Three is also in Mimic. It's a, it's a monster film. Basically, a scientist created these insects to 
take out these other insect infestation in the New York subway system. And the insects evolved too quickly. And they, I guess the insects special thing was they mimic their prey so that they can get in with the prey close and kill them. And they started mimicking man. They have a silhouette that makes them look like a man. So it's, it's, it's an okay film. It's a monster movie. It is definitely a paint by numbers monster movie. People die, lots of screaming, things like that. Late 90s monster movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So from Mimic, we take Josh Brolin and go into Deadpool 2. Okay, okay. Fits the theme because Deadpool constantly breaks the fourth wall. And I travel shenanigans and women mm -hmm. wobbly. Yeah, from Deadpool 2, we take Steven Skarsgård and go into It. Steven Skarsgård? Yeah, Steven Skarsgård is in It. Or is in Deadpool 2. playing It. Or I thought Bill Skarsgård was the one who was in It. Oh, shit. Maybe my list is bad. I think I took the wrong scars guard out of it. Uh-oh. Yep, I did. Okay, scratch this list. Scratch this list. Shit. I, 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 hey, I just pulled a Tom, because Tom did the same thing with fucking <laughs> Independence Day. All right. <laughs> high five. Shit. Okay, well, I still have two other lists. That's why I made a third. All right. You want right. to go with one of the other lists? Then? Yeah, let me go with one of the other lists then. All right. That was a okay. good list otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit. I like that you both had picked as your number four or number five films. Uh, you went with both went comic book. You did dig that? Okay. Technically, isn't comic book blonde a uh, comic book? I never watched it, so I don't know. I think you're right. Um, I think the main character was a dude, uh, but they flipped it with Charlize Theron, and mm -hmm. didn't look bad. I mm -hmm. couldn't tell you a difference between that, but neither here nor there. Nigel, you're back up. Oh. All right, so uh, then I'm going to have this list is going to be called The Government Sucks, Time for a Revolution. Okay. So number one is Roy Scheider in The French Connection. Number two is Gene Hackman in Enemy of the State. Oh, good choice, good choice, good choice. Hackman. Gene Hackman. <laughs> Such a good actor, too. So then from Enemy of the State, we take Gabriel Byrne and go into Man in the Iron Mask. Oh, that's a good one. Is that the uh, one with Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, and the, the uh, John Malkovich and then play the Three Musketeers. Yep. And Gabriel Byrne's actually D'Artagnan in that movie. Not quite as good as uh, uh, Chris O'Donnell, but, you know, yeah. so few are. I like that movie because it played the, it was showed the Musketeers as older men. So uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I do enjoy that movie. Uh, uh, from Man in the Iron Mask, we go Leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, that's a good one. That's a, that'll be another long one. Yeah. Number five is Matthew McConaughey in Dark Tower, which is a movie I was super pumped to see. And then it came out and the reviews were tanking on it. And I was just like, Ugh. so I've actually never seen it. And from Dark Tower, we take Nicholas Hamilton, one of the kids in It. I actually yep. tried to use that one in my uh, last, the next uh, list that I have because Dark Tower is a Stephen King movie. Yeah, Dark Tower is based on a Stephen King novel as well. Mm -hmm. So. Again, this is a for me. This is another one of those lists where the ones I've seen I've liked, and the ones I haven't seen I've been curious to see. Minus mm -hmm. Dark Tower, I've been a little reticent, but so has everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was super to pumped to see that movie. I was so excited. The, the trailers make the movie look really good. I know, I know, I know. That's the job of movie trailers. They're they're literally marketing tools. But like the trailers <laughs> made that movie. I was so pumped to see it, but I couldn't see it opening weekend because my, the job I was working at the time I was on call. So I never went to go see it. And I was reading the reviews and the reviews were tanking. And then like reviews said, from people I trust online were like, not good. It's not great. It's not good. It's not great. And I'm like, damn, Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba in the movie sucks. I know, right? <laughs> like, I remember when I was looking, that was, that's been one of those movies where I, I too was convinced by the trailer. But then when I saw the reviews take, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm not going to watch it. But uh, I was interested to watch it because my next list, I was, I wanted to get through that one. But I'll explain here in a minute why I couldn't. But yeah, it's like that it seemed interesting, but it's like unless I was forced to watch it, I probably wouldn't watch it. Well, that follows the old rules of Stephen King. If it's a movie based on one of his books, it's going to suck. With the exception of it, that's almost always been the case. And it's not surprising to me that this one kind of fell into that trap. Yeah, the movie has since kind of gotten a quasi cult following, but uh, it's still got a pretty low rating on Rotten Tomatoes and all that. I'm still going to say it's probably going to be, be a bad film, but it might be an entertainingly bad film. And even the bad films we have watched, we've managed to get some entertainment out of them. I, I agree with you. It's like, I haven't seen French Connection. It's been years since I've seen Enemy of the State. I remember really enjoying Man in the Iron Mask, but that may be another one of those... It was a bad movie, but I was young enough that I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I recently watched Wolf of Wall Street for the first time within the past when it came out, 2013. So I saw it within a couple within the past couple of years, and I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. And Dark Tower, 
I'd watch it if I had to because I'm curious about it. But that's a good list. I thought that was a good list. I, I was actually genuinely shocked when I was doing this list that Man in the Iron Mask is so reviled. I love that movie. I don't know why. The score, I think, is amazing. And I think all the actors are great in the movie. It's just, it's got like a 32% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, really? <laughs> One of those things where like, you genuinely love something and you just kind of assume everybody else thought it was a good flick too. And then you read it and you're like, oh, I'm the only one that likes this. <laughs> oh, dude, that's like me in the movie Rockstar. I absolutely love that movie, but it's got like 53% on RT and like a six out of 10 on IMDb. It's like, nobody likes that movie but me. And most people are like, that's a movie? What's that about? <laughs> I mean, those people on the internet aren't wrong, Josh. I'm sorry to say, dude. I just, I, it's one of those things. I saw that movie one time and I just absolutely loved it. Wait, Rockstar? We talked yeah, about Yeah, with the... Mark Wahlberg and Jennifer Aniston. Oh, I was thinking the Tom Cruise one for a second. Oh, no, I don't know why. No. no, yeah, no, that film was great. What's wrong with the internet? I don't know. I know. They don't. They don't like it. It's based on a true story. It's based on the. Um. Oh, he's actually from Ohio. He was the guy that replaced the lead singer for Judas Priest for yeah. a few years. It's based on a true story. Yeah. I think all the original music in that movie is great. And I think Mark Wahlberg, like I typically say Mark Wahlberg is one of those actors who has one role that he plays, but he did such a great job of being in that movie. But again, it's like. Nobody liked that movie. But back to Man in the Iron Mask. I love that movie. You love that movie, but everybody else seems to hate it. <laughs> I've never seen it, so I am I could go either way. All right. Now, Tom, what's your uh, number two list? Now we're starting number twos, our second list. Yes, we That's... are. And this one I am tentatively calling, I almost had something with this list. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh, is that what it's called? <laughs> <No>. Yes. <laughs> I, I like almost. That. <laughs> The almost list. Let's just call it that for brevity's well, I like, sake. I almost had something dot, dot, dot list. <laughs> yes. Um, I start with Richard Dreyfus in The American President, which connects to Michael Douglas in A Perfect Murder. Ooh. And from A Perfect Murder, I take David Eichenberg into The Mothman Prophecies. And Will Patton was in The Mothman Prophecies, and he was also in the 2018 Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis, who is in Knives Out. Oh, and yeah. in Knives Out, we have Jaden Martell in it. Five of those films all deal with murder and mystery, except The American President. I could not find one that was themed that would connect me to anything else. So that's The Odd Man Out. So that's the I almost had something list. You can make it fit. Something something war, something pandemic, killing a bunch of people. I don't know. Yeah, if any of you can find a first film that has uh, Michael Douglas and, and someone from Jaws that we could somehow slide in there, maybe we could make something of it. But yeah, that's that was the best I could do for number two, guys. Hmm. It's a good list. Like, I haven't seen the first Solid. four movies, <laughs> but mm -hmm. Knives Out was one of those movies where I was very reluctant only because uh, Rian Johnson directed and wrote it, and I'm still bitter at him for The Last Jedi. But mm -hmm. I ended up watching it and thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Like, I really enjoyed that movie. It had me guessing until the very end. Seriously, right? That was a good right? movie. Yes, it was. I and mean... I actually haven't seen it. Oh, it's a it's a really good film. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna overhype it. It's what Rian Johnson could have done with Star Wars if the studio hadn't been on his shoulders the whole time. He was like him saying, "Yeah, I do know what I'm doing, guys. Fuck the mouse." Yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. I think that's what every director that's been fired from Disney on Star Wars has said. Yep. And there's yep. it's been almost all of them. I didn't they 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 fired the guy who did Rogue One like three or four months before it was released, and they went back and did reshoots. Ant-Man, too. Uh, Edgar Wright, they fired him halfway through and had someone else do it. Still turned out okay film, but yeah. makes me wonder what could have been. But, yeah, that's the mouse right there. And honestly, Nigel, yeah, even if we don't watch it in this path, we'll find a way to get to there. It's Well, it's, there's a lot of actors in Knives Out, so even if we don't choose this list, we'll get to that. Daniel Craig and just, yeah, so many actors in that movie. It's going to be kind of hard to Evans. avoid Evans. Yeah, Chris Evans. It's going to be kind of hard to avoid that one. So. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good movie. Yeah. There's a lot of big names in that one. But mm -hmm. no, I like that movie. And honestly, I'm not going to lie. This one, yeah, this a weaker list I, aside from the mothman prophecies i really iffy about i don't really know much about a perfect murder have you guys ever seen mothman prophecies I no not. like I, I said the only movie i've seen on this list is knives out and it <laughs> it's so boring oh, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah um the mothman prophecies is incredibly 
boring. Like it was based on a true story. Well, I, I guess something happened in the true story because they had to really pad this one out. It's been a while since I've seen it, and I don't know, maybe because I saw it in my early twenties, and I was like, "Could do something. Somebody get a gun. Go show some boobs or something." So you know, keep me we, interested. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. Can we at least get a nudie scene here? No, Laura Linney doesn't do nude scenes. Damn it. What about Richard Keir? Come on, come on, Rich. Yeah, Give us nothing. something. Okay, so, well, then, I think that's as good as I can hype it. Next! Uh, do you want to go, Josh, or you want me to go? Yep, I got it. So, this is my particularly favorite list. This one, I'm going to... I don't know what I want to go with. I like Kings and Kids, or Kids and Kings, but the other one I want to play off the office, Scott's Tots, and call it King's Kids. But I'm going to go with Kids and Kings, because... Like, I tried to do all Stephen King movies. There's only, there's about 50-ish movies that have been made based off of Stephen King stories. And unfortunately, there is one Stephen King movie that links from Jaws. But there's no Stephen King movies that link from that movie. So, okay. my first movie is we follow Richard Dreyfus from Jaws to Stand By Me. Oh, you cheat. Yeah, good choice. Nice. Yeah. He's the narrator. That's right, he's the narrator. Yep. yep, he's in it. Now, this is why I call it The Kids and Kings. Because Stephen King, it is a Stephen King novel about kids. So is Stand By Me. So that's why I felt it was a great start to this particular list. I like that. I do like yeah. that a lot. So there's a common theme. It's either kids and kings or kids or kings films. So the next movie, and I'm actually really happy I was able to do this one. This is one of my absolute favorite movies as a kid. From Stand By Me, we follow River Phoenix to Explorers. 1985 children's sci-fi movie where the kids discover the ability to create a force field and they basically take garbage and create a spaceship and travel through space. And the show is about them figuring out how to work this thing and getting it to work and everything. Interesting. Wow. I'm surprised you guys haven't heard of this movie because I oh, loved it, it as a kid. What Explorers. Uh, okay. A very young Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix. The name is ringing a bell, oh, but... Google I... it real quick. Remember, it's the one where it's like Carnival Ride with garbage cans on the side, and they basically build a spaceship inside of this force field. It's really an awesome movie, but uh, the ending goes kind of crazy. But it's definitely a kid's movie, but it's one of those... Uh, it's like the reason you enjoyed Iron Man, and you got to be there built with him building the armor. You're with the kids building this spaceship, and they're discovering this force field technology and all of this other stuff, and it's really an awesome movie. But huh. I'm afraid, as an adult watching it, it's going to get kind of weird at the end because they meet the aliens i'm no spoilers or anything but it's a very interesting movie yeah i'm looking at the uh cover well this seems like um generic just threw it onto the dvd cover but no this but it's a doesn't... kids movie the kids uh basically it's about a group of kids trying to build something it's a group of kids, so that's why it fits the theme of my Kids and Kings. So okay. from Explorers, we follow James Cromwell, because he was the dad of River Phoenix in that movie, I think, to The Green Mile, which was oh, a Stephen King movie. That's... Damn. Wow, that's... Josh, you got the bases loaded. You better get a base hit on these last couple of movies. Cause... I think I'm going to. <laughs> I got one exception, the, the low point in this one, but I had to do this one in order to get to it. From The Green Mile, we follow Jeffrey DeMunn to The Shawshank Redemption. That's a good one, too. Yeah. Isn't that also based on the King novel? That's it. And it's a Spielberg uh, movie. Yep. Shit. Now we follow Gil Bellows. And like I said, this is a... This is going to be an interesting one. I've only seen bits and pieces of it, but Guillermo del Toro, so keep that in mind, the very famous practical effects guy, he made scary stories to tell in the dark based off of the kids' book. Remember that one? It had the oh, three God. parts. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy stories too. And Did I'll you... admit, I watched bits and pieces of it. It didn't do too well. It got a 6.2 on IMDb, but it was creepy as fuck because it was Guillermo del Toro in all his glory. Did that actually come into theaters before the whole pandemic hit? That was March of 2019. Wow, I knew they were going to make it, but I didn't think they made it in time. But uh, yeah, it's about a group of kids, and it's horror, so it kind of fits the bill. Now, mm -hmm. uh, the link on this one's a little looser, but uh, Javier Botet. Think of him as the horror genre's Andy Zirkus. He's the one who wears the costumes, and he's effectively Chewbacca. Why is his name coming? Peter... Mayhew. Mayhew, thank you. He's basically Peter Mayhew for a horror genre. He's one of those really tall, limber guys who walks can walk really creepy. But anywho, he is in It as the creepy hobo. So you follow him from Scary Stories to uh, It. Nice. So to recap, Stand By Me via River Phoenix to Explorers via James Cromwell to The Green Mile via James DeMunn to The Shawshank Redemption via Gil Bellows Two scary stories to tell in the dark via Javier Botet to it. Kids and Kings. That's my absolute favorite list that I came up with. 
That is a banger list, dude. That's a good fucking list. Yeah, that's a that's gonna be. Yeah, a hard I don't one even want. I don't. I don't even know if I want to follow that one. Um, <laughs> that's a good list. I had a list for Jaws that took us through Stand by Me only because I wanted to watch that movie again. So, well, I mean, I had a legitimate connection, but I thought, oh, I want to see that movie again. But yeah, um, I had a list that I was trying to do that started with Dreyfus and Stand by Me and went into The Lost Boys, but I couldn't. I couldn't get much past that. So yeah, wow, there's here. like no connections from The Lost Boys to it. I tried to look. I wanted to do that one too. I did all kinds of searches for this one. I did horror searches trying to find horror films but like one of the big ones that i found was through uh cory feldman did a tales from the crypt keeper movie like the bordello of blood that was not very good <laughs> but I, I man i went through so many different possibilities and out of all of them i saw this one and i'm like this one makes sense I yeah like that's this a one. that's a good list if we went with this one i'd be this is six weeks of pretty awesome stuff scary stories and explorers are the only two movies well it as well so there's technically three movies in this list i haven't seen however stand by me love it green mile love it shawshank love it explorers on i just googled it when you were telling us to google it now that kind of looks like why never why didn't i ever see this movie as a kid and i actually do kind of want to see scary stories because i was a big fan of those books when i was a kid so. yeah same here like i've only seen bits and pieces of it because my daughter and her friend was watching it and i was watching just a bit of it with them and i thought the seed that they did was pretty scary for a kid's film but like they were I were really haven't... creepy stories. They were super yeah. creepy for kids stories. Oh yeah. The stories are very like reminiscent of old world Grimm's fairy tales. Like Disney has cleaned those up so much that everyone expects a happy ending out of all those fairy tale stories, even though they were not. <laughs> they were high octane nightmare fuel back in the day. Yeah, they were um, lessons to tell your kids so they would wouldn't act up. Like yeah. Ariel died at the end of uh, The Little Mermaid. Yeah, after mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, then, uh, then little then, red, uh, little Prince, red Riding Hood died. Little red, uh, the wolf actually ate Little Red Riding Hood. Sleeping Beauty got raped by Prince Charming. Yeah, they're they're not. They weren't supposed to be. Finds Prince lives happily ever after. Yeah, no, they they were the <laughs> slasher films for ye olden times. Yeah, it was, they were um, just public domain when Disney got a hold of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and they cleaned them up and they made their animated movies out of them. But like almost all of them are just horrible stories. So I like that list, Josh. I really do like that list. That's a damn solid one. Yeah, it's a good shit. one. Nigel, you want to follow that one up? <laughs> yeah, I'll follow it. I mean, we never, you never know. So this one I'm going to call the, uh, I was originally going to call it gunfights. So many, many gunfights. But, oh, no, it's called gunfights. So many, many gunfights. But clowns. <laughs> but this, this one is now going to be renamed. This is not as good as Josh's list. So... <laughs> Uh, number one, we take Roy Scheider from Jaws and go into The Punisher. He was in The Punisher? Yeah. Oh, he's, that's right, the, uh, yeah, the, the he's 90s. Frank Castle's, yeah, he's in Frank, Cas- yeah, he's Frank Castle's dad. So yeah, so it's it's the 2004 Punisher film. Then Punisher, we take John Travolta and go into Pulp Fiction. Okay. Then we take Bruce Willis and go into Die Hard 3, Die Hard with a Vengeance. I've never seen that. Oh, it's great. It's absolutely... It's, it's, it's good. It's, it's good. It's, it's the last good Die Hard sequel. And then we take... Samuel L. Jackson and go into A Time to Kill. And then this is where it had a, the same movie as in my last list. It's Time to Kill. We take Matthew McConaughey and go into Dark Tower and then Nicholas Hamilton to It. So the last two movies are the same as one of my other lists, but the first four were different. All right. Uh, for me, you say Die Hard 3 was the last good Die Hard sequel. I would counter it's the only good Die Hard sequel. Well, I would agree with that. Although two, I didn't hate Die Hard 2. Yeah, 2 is an entertaining movie, but it's almost... I I, agree, I I can't remember who said it on on YouTube once, but he said that Die Hard 2 is almost too much of a sequel. It's almost beat for beat the same story as Die Hard 1, whereas mm-hmm. Die Hard 3, it's still the same character. He's still John McClane, but he's in a completely different setting. So it's a better sequel than Die Hard 2. And it's... Before Die Hard with a Vengeance and Live Free or Die Hard, where John McClane started to become basically a cartoon character. I thought Die Hard 3 was Die Hard with a Vengeance. No, I meant to say um, uh, Live Free or Die Hard yeah, and no what was the fourth? What was the fourth one? Oh, oh no, no, Live Free. The fourth one was Live Free. The fifth one was A Good Day to Die Hard. That's right. But this one's Die Hard with a Vengeance, and it's the last good Die Hard sequel. So pretty decent film. So anyways, go on, Tom. No, no, that's a, again, this is a pretty decent list. I'm sorry that I had to follow Josh's. <laughs> That's that's following up uh, uh, Led Zeppelin. They're like, hey, we're Bob and the boys, and we just followed up Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Um, that was their uh, uh, immigrant song. That's uh, this one's about 
cars, please <laughs> keep listening to us. Yeah. <laughs> it's a solid list, though. It's a good list. I I do want to see Die Hard 3. I'm curious about Dark Tower again, just because mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. And, you know, it could be... I could like it. A Time to Kill. Was that the Gina Davis one, or...? It's um, it's actually a movie about... Oh, like that's a Bond what... film. It, it's <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson's daughters, I think, are... Ra I, I've never actually seen the movie. It's funny, it's directed by Joel Schumacher, Mr. Bat Nipples himself. But I think Samuel L. Jackson plays a dad whose daughters were raped and murdered by a bunch of guys, and he killed them before they could go on trial. And so now they're putting him on trial for killing those rapists or whatever and Matthew McConaughey and I think Sandra Bullock play the two lawyers trying to defend him. It's based on a John Grisham novel directed by Joel Schumacher. I've never seen it. I remember my mom and dad got it from Blockbuster or something one day. They liked it, but I've never seen it. At the time that it came out, I was not interested in those kinds of movies, so mm -hmm. I never saw it. But it does have a famous line and what is that line, Nigel? Oh, shit. No, what is it? Um... I have yes, no idea. Yes, I'm glad they're dead. I hope they burn in hell. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. yeah. That's a good list, except for The Punisher. I've expressed that I'm not a huge fan of that one. Don't get me wrong. I thought Thomas Jane was great in it. And uh, Kevin Clash, Nash, what's his name? Yeah. Kevin I Nash he was, plays yeah. Russian. And I, I still still love that one scene where he's threatening the one dude with like burning his back with the thing, saying it's gonna feel like it's gonna get ice cold, and then he rubs his back with a uh, popsicle. popsicle. Yeah. Yeah. That's lifted straight from the comics too. Overall, although I wasn't a huge fan of it, I didn't like that when it was in theaters. But Pulp Fiction, I love. Die Hard Three, I love. Never mm. seen a Time to Kill or have I? It's one of those ones I don't know. And again, I've already mentioned my thoughts on Dark Tower, but that's a good list. That's a definitely a solid list. Yeah, yeah. If we wound up with this one, I wouldn't complain much. Mm. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone that we really could go wrong with here. Um, so I guess we got a decision to make then. Welcome back to another intense episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and finder of ways to have interspersal segments, Tom. Podcast Tom didn't think we could fit this in, but interspersal Tom, he's got you back. And thanks for joining us on our third official selection section the watermark that measures the tides of our stuff yeah i've kind of burned out all the nautical puns from our sauced sink or swim summer tour but get ready for some new route specific puns starting in the next few days Woohoo! no need to peek into the theater this time as you're already there with us but how about we take a glimpse of what an ad would look like if we had one because it's like it's pizza delivery night and i usually spoil claire i let her get her own pizza because she likes ham and pineapple and bacon and katie and i are indifferent to that but claire mm -hmm. loves it so i always get her a pineapple pizza and she's always like super excited about it so claire looks forward to fridays too you so. are a great father because people who like pineapple pizza are awesome oh. uh, um... i'm indifferent i'm indifferent to it like i'll eat it but um, I won't order one for myself. But if like, I'm I'm somewhere, like when I go over to your house and you've got a couple slices of it, I'll eat it. But uh, with the exception of Donato's, Donato's pineapple pizza is amazing because they put the brown sugar on it with the almonds and all that. It's awesome. Ooh, it's a dessert. It's yeah. practically a pie. And Donato's uses like a sweet honey ham instead of like regular ham. So they use a sweet honey ham and then they put pineapple on it. Then they dust it with like a little like brown sugar stuff. And then it goes into the oven and then they dust it again when it comes out of the oven. Uh, oh, and then they dust it with the almonds, and then the brown sugar when it comes out of the oven. That's right. The almonds go in the oven so that the almonds get toasted, too. Ooh, go ahead, my sir. It's yeah. fucking awesome. It's really good. Like I, when That's the only one when we order Donato's, I order a large so I can have a few slices, too. Incidentally, this episode not brought to you by Donato's. Yes, it not. Be. it could be. It could be Donato's and Donato's, if you're listening. And I know one of you is. We're all in Ohio, and you're from Ohio. I'm not saying... I'm just saying, okay? And Donato's, or any of you would be sponsor Hungry Pizza Joints, or any other place who would like to give us money to talk about your products for reals, or if you're just a human hoping to say some human things at us, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. 
you guys put in the subject line whether you have an ad request, a question request, comment request, request request, or just want to say hi. And will 100% get around to reading it and 100% never let you know. That email again is Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to see if I can't steal a slice of that abomination of a dessert pizza on my way back to the episode. Thank you for listening, and as always, good luck. <laughs>Does anyone have a ringer they want to bring up? I don't because my gunfights, so many, many gunfights, but clowns, was my third list. And uh, my first list is now null and void because I used the wrong scars card. <laughs> don't you hate it when that happens? I fucking God damn it. Stop having actors be brothers. <laughs> Nick Cage at least went with a completely different last name. Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen have completely different names, but they're brothers. We thank you guys for doing that for yeah. us. Uh, Reginald, do you have a list? Not um, 1,300 list. No, but, but honestly, I still say I, that my favorite list that I came up with was Kids and Kings. Yeah, that's a yeah, good one. It's a cheater list. You cheated with that list. It's too good. <laughs> it's way too good. Yeah, that only somebody who has a fucking algorithm could have come up with that list. <laughs> that sure as fuck wasn't taking notes and doing your homework and having 45 fucking IMDB pages listed on, on, up on your browser. It's like the, the, the song of John Henry, only someone brings in a frickin' mecha and just destroys him. <laughs> Kills them both. <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's start to voting, fellas. So if we do, we want to go by list to list, or give our thoughts, or do we just want to like go right into our favorite? Yeah, I just think let's just um go right into our favorites. And if it's your own list, is your own favorite, that's fine. We can bias is okay. We come by it honestly. I think both of my lists were the best lists. Um, in fact, uh, I'm already recording those episodes. We're gonna just do that. But no, honestly, <laughs> Josh. Yeah, King's Kids. Both of your lists, Josh, were just really good. Nigel, your first list, I'm calling the revolution list, was pretty damn fantastic. But yeah, King's Kids just yes. it's all the theme. It's uh-huh. so good. Yeah, I, I have to say King's Kids, one, it just fits because we're going to a Stephen King film and this movie has a couple of Stephen King stories in it and a couple of stories inspired by Stephen King. So... I'd have to say this one is probably my favorite list, too. Yeah. I actually want to see scary score stories. Just you know, scary. I even misspelled scories in my freaking <laughs> notes. Wow. Yeah, scary stories I really was curious about, and I'm glad it got made before the pandemic hit and killed Hollywood so I can get to see it in Explorers. I honestly never heard of it, Josh. If you had, hadn't brought it up, I like, would have gone my entire life never knowing it existed. So, yeah, I think King's Kids, for yeah, that's a good one. What, what are your thoughts there? Well, I thoroughly enjoyed your guys' lists, too. Like, um, Dan's uh, gunfights list, uh, your government sucks list was really good, too. Like, I, I was envisioning watching that one, because I'd never seen French Connection, and you guys brought it up during the I last know. section. And I was like, I'm curious to see that one. So I hope someday we either get to it, or maybe I'm just going to have to watch it. It's got Gene um, Hackman in it. There's no way we're not going to ever get to the French yeah. Connection at some point. Dude, I was just watching something with Superman. Like, that could be our December movie, Get to Superman. Yeah, but like I absolutely love, and there's just rewatching something with Superman, like the Chris Reeve Superman. I'm like, man, I need to rewatch that movie. It's weird since we've been doing this podcast. I'm like holding off watching movies in case we get to it. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, I've been only limiting Netflix and right now and stuff to television shows because I've been holding off watching movies because I'm like, oh, what if we get to this for the podcast? Even if it's a movie I've seen before, and I'm like, I haven't seen that movie in a while. I should watch it again. I'm like, nope. <laughs> yeah, like that's the big reason I haven't watched Jurassic Park is because I'm like, we're going to get to it sooner than later. <laughs> but um, if I like, I, I like all your guys' lists, but I do have a certain bias towards King's Kids, and I absolutely did enjoy coming up with that one, even though I technically didn't, but I well, did. Well, I'll, I'll say this about my second list. My bullets, gunfights, clowns, 
most of those movies star actors who are pretty big names. Like Punisher has John Travolta in it. Pulp Fiction has John Travolta and Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson in it. Die Hard 3 has Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson. Time to Kill has Samuel L. Jackson, Sandra Bullock, Matthew McConaughey. Dark Tower has got Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba. And so those are movies we'll probably get it to some point in time. So we don't have to go with my list, but your King's Kids list has movies that would be really hard to get to without trying to get to it. You see what I'm saying? And fun oh. fact, I didn't know this, that The Running Man is actually a Stephen King story. Yeah, I this didn't know that either until I was looking it up. Loosely adapted from yeah. uh, Stephen King, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's loosely adapted, but it's still adapted by Stephen King, or is it adapted by a Stephen King story. I think we most Hollywood adaptations are loose. Mm-hmm. I vote King's Kids. Second. And I'll go ahead and third it. But with a little bias peppered in. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Honestly, this and, and I, I'm really glad we're going with this list because now that means we went with one of mine, we went with one of Tom's, and we went with one of yours now. So I think, yeah, we're all unanimous. Uh, it's going to be King's Kids. Now, I know we're about at the time here, but what do we want to name this? Take the kids to school and then uh, give them to the king? I mean, what, what are we thinking for a, a title of this Kids fucking hate clowns. <laughs> fuck the kids. <laughs> not not fuck the kids. No. Yeah, that'd be mad. That would be very bad. Um, nope. Nope. Let's call it the Lolita Express. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> no, not. No, no, no. no. <laughs> We're on our way to Epstein Island. Where's nope. a mute? That's nope. it. No. Nope. Nope. Uh, 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 this uh. is uh, time to mute Nigel. <laughs> How do we scare the children or scaring the children? <laughs> Story time with kings and kids. Yeah, we'll mull over it. We'll we'll come yeah. up with a name here in a couple of days. We Have did the until, sink, or, uh, yeah, right. sink or swim. Sink or uh, I think we we did our our one list on Saturday or Sunday, and Josh had sink or swim by Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll we'll come up with something. Oh yeah. no, I had I came up with sink or swim like the day before we uh, filmed our first one. It was a good choice too. <laughs> we only went it so we could make drinking yeah. jokes. Sauced. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. Candy van. That's what we'll call this. Take a ride to the candy van. <laughs> Get no. in the van. We have candy. King's candy van. But we'll figure it out. So, Josh, you want to brag about this list one more time so our audience can have that sweet, sweet, braggadocious ASMR? I am so glad that you guys went with my list and went with my recommendation for the Final Journey movie. It definitely bloats my ego, and I would like to take credit for this list, but in the end... Yeah, Robo Josh got this one for us. It's a lot uh, better than Robo Tom or Tom Bot. <laughs> Tom. Yeah, we're we're not bringing that one out of the scrap heap. It's yeah, staying and recycled. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed our selection section number three, and I uh, hope you look forward to the next six weeks worth of movies. I've been Josh. I've been Dan. I've- I've been Tom. Continue following us on uh, firepit.podbean.com. It is, of course, the address where we keep our podcast. It is a fantastic podcast hosting site, and we are fantastically honored to be part of that. Uh, You can also, as always, find us on Amazon, Google, iTunes, and anywhere, well, almost anywhere where podcasts can be found. Oh, yeah, Spotify. Spotify, Almost anywhere you can get podcasts. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. And email us at um, normally do this at entertainment. (laughs) Curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com, of course. That's Curtain Call Entertainment INC at gmail.com. Uh, since I don't think uh, this is long enough to really warrant a interspersal segment, or maybe it will, I'll figure it out in editing. Special shout out to Peggy. Ha <laughs> ha, two in one week. You're awesome. Thanks for listening. Thanks for catching up on the podcast. I'm glad it's entertaining you while you're getting your new office set up. And uh, this has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment. Thanks for listening and good luck out there. Richard Dreyfus to Stand By Me, River Phoenix to Explorers, 
James Cromwell to The Green Mile, Jeffrey DeMunn to The Shawshank Redemption, Gail Bellows to Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, Javier Botet, It. Yeah. <laughs>